Okay, uh, since we left last time, I had some technical problems uh, with the sound, so uh, I have to explain uh, what I did. We had this curve here uh, at, well, uh, about the same pitch. A little bit higher here. Now we have to be very careful. And then uh, I was supposed to show you how I did the length arch. And uh, we can do that. Can you hear it's a little bit higher here? You can tap also. So we have to take away. We're not totally done here. This one is a little bit too aggressive. Then the phenomenon is that when I take off here, I know that uh, it's going to uh, the tone is rising here, outside, closer to the edge from this point where I took off material. And uh, I mean, uh, it's uh, totally logical because. Uh, say that uh, if you take off a lot of material here you end up with a bulge here so you take off that material then the bulge ends up here so you take off that one and you fall, sort of trace it all the way to the edge um, so um, uh, the thing is that we should have this curve all the way down to the edge if we didn't do the provisional channeling here we will end up a little bit too high here and when we cut the channel we have this uh, bulge so this should be very close to where the actual edge is but we'll come back to that when uh, we make the inlay and uh, make the final cut for for the channel So here can you hear there is a high point? So we take off there too. totally done here either. Uh, there's a here's higher. Huh? There. And we can tap it. I'm always amazed how little you take off. I mean, it's uh, <coughs> it's a challenge to take off so uh, thin shavings as possible, and still it alters the tone. That shows a little bit how exact this method is. And again, we uh, 
have to take off outside the first spot here we took off some material then that rises the tone outside of it and now the, cha uh, the challenge to tap here and here it's higher here When we come down to just like brushing the surface with a plane, I leave it, uh, although it's might uh, maybe a little bit higher or lower every in, uh, here and there because uh, we will fine adjust it later. Uh, so now we have this curve and we have that curve, pretty much in the same tune. Now we use, well, we do the quadrants, like these, and uh, in the same way, just uh, and then of course we use our eyes, I mean, uh, we we get uh, uh, the result by using our ears, but uh, when we see a big thing like this, uh, we can take, take away roughly, but stop in time. In my experience of this uh, method is that pays off to be very careful. It's, uh, when we look at Strad's instruments, uh, they are marvelously done. Uh, Strad arching is uh, like a, a poem. And uh, Guarneri violins, which are famous for their rough uh, work in uh, like scrolls and the inlays and so on they are perfect in arching so um, we go on with this and the same thing here always from the middle out uh, it, uh, It is very important not to start at a random point here somewhere and uh, do everything because it, uh, it can backfire very bad.
I support the theory of working with as big tools as possible. So um, I wouldn't use this one to make the arching here. Uh, it would sort of make uh, an uh, uneven uh, surface. So therefore I use this one wherever I can get to it, but down here it turns into smaller and smaller planes. one I'm not done with this part yet, but uh, I guess you uh, understand the, uh, the point. So uh, I come back to you when I'm uh, sort of done all the other ones and we uh, take it from there. <laughs> 